بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين يا رب In the Muslim community uh, we're beginning to have a lot of divorces and a lot of the mothers they have children uh, boys, small boys, small girls um, and uh, the question of child custody according to Islam is becoming a bigger and bigger issue um, <clears throat> I uh, had uh, the Darul Qada in one of the bigger masjids in the Chicagoland area, and um, and this question is becoming a, a very serious question. So I want to you know shed some light uh, on this question, not from the perspective of the Fuqaha, because I think first of all we need to, and I will maybe have other talks on the, the what the Fuqaha have said. But first, I want to go back to the uh, primary sources, which is the uh, Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet So, <clears throat> and, and the most controversial is, of course, the saying of the Prophet وسلم, uh, that the you have, meaning he's saying to the to the mother, you have more right to the child as long as you're not you're not remarried. So, <clears throat> so. The Fuqaha took this hadith to mean that, and, and here I want to be uh, very sp uh, specific, when a hadith of the Prophet is said to an individual, to a particular person, uh, the Fuqaha will argue, is this a general rule or particular to this person? So this is one issue. Second issue is, there's not necessarily a hukum in this hadith. There is a preference you can say based to and particularly based upon the situation as you know in islam if the situation changes then you have to look at the general spirit of islam and looking at the general spirit of islam you have to try to apply the spirit of that hadith even if it's going uh, you could say uh, it's because of the change in the situation uh, like we have this in financial matters for example um we have uh, this in many of the issues for example, the faucet, right? <clears throat> so, uh, for, uh, when I say the faucet, let me clarify that. For example, um, the faucet comes from a water that is standing still. When generally water that's standing still is still water and not purifying water, but we accept that we can do wudu in that water. Um, so, however, I was just mentioning, so when the Prophet says something to a particular lady on a particular case, uh, the question of can you generalize that um, is, is a question the Fuqaha have. Second thing is, is that the Prophet didn't say, he said you have more of a right as, until, uh, as long as you are not remarried. Meaning, not necessarily saying you have a less of a right after you're married. Meaning, let's say, let me explain this to you this way. Let's say uh, I have... Uh, um, so, uh, somebody gives me uh, a very expensive uh, phone, okay, let's say the iPhone, and somebody says to me, you have more rights to this phone, okay, as long as uh, you're in this house, you have more rights, okay, does that mean that necessarily I have less rights uh, to the phone if I leave the house? No, because it's saying in this situation, it's clear you definitely have more rights, once the situ your situation changes to from leaving this house to another house, the situation has to be reassessed, and then we have to see who has more rights. <clears throat> so it's not a quick judgment that can just be made that, oh, uh, the uh, mother got uh, divorced, she wants to get remarried, because otherwise... Uh, you know, sisters are they're going to not be able to get remarried without going through considerable amount of problems. And uh, that is against the general spirit of Islam, by the way. Because Islam wants uh, women to be married. And wants uh, the, the women to have a... and men to have a married life. Um, so there have been cases, for example, a guy wants to marry a girl, but they didn't get married because of this case and because of this issue of custody the mother doesn't want to lose the child and so she is uh, and what happens people in that situation especially begin to resent the deen and begin to resent Islam and uh, it is not 
uh, and you know, the, the Islam is not against fitrah. Islam is not against human nature. And so, so anybody studying that hadith of the Prophet ﷺ should understand that that was first of all said in a particular situation, in a particular case, in a tribal society. And this is why when the issue of who does the child go to after the remarriage is not necessary. If you look at the fuqaha, it's not necessary. And um, like I said, I'm not going to talk about the fuqaha that much right now. But it's not necessarily going directly to the father. It could be other relatives. Mean, meaning, in other words, it could go to the father or it could go to the grandmother, depending upon what the situation is. So, <clears throat> so, of course, on the other side, the father has a right. But, in you know, always the interest of the child will be looked at. Um, and the interest of the child is not looked at by the father or by the mother. It has to be a third party that understands the current environment understands the sociological factors of the world today, um, understands what the the general outline of what the fuqaha have said, and the realities of, of 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 the situation that we live in, and so you know there are some issues in which we need to revise some of the the fiqh, um, and this is one of those issues because we're no longer in a tribal society. Where, you know, if you give your child to somebody, like in the time of the Prophet, you know, the Prophet spent his youth outside his house, right? Because it, it's like the whole village is raising the child. We no longer have that situation. The mothers raise the child now, basically. And, um, and uh, in, in the olden days, many people would take care of the child. And there's also the hadith in, uh, of Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad. Uh, I think it's actually in the first volume, where uh, Umar bin Khattab, uh, he, his uh, son uh, got divorced uh, from his wife, and the wife had the child, and so he uh, took the child, okay, and uh, brought the child to his house. And she went and complained to Umar bin Khattab, and Umar bin Khattab took the child and took it back to the mother. So, the issue of remarriage is really, the mother has a right, but... If getting remarried changes the situation, it simply needs to be reassessed. So I have, a, I have a right to an iPhone here in the house. Once I leave, I have more of a right of it for sure while I'm in the house. Once I leave, then it has to be reassessed. And this is what the Prophet said. He did not say, the child has to go to the father after you're remarried. He said, you have a more of a right until you are remarried. Meaning... After you're remarried, does not necessarily mean you have a less of a right. It simply needs to be reassessed. And of course, if the father is paying the expenses, if the father is involved, if the father is committed to the child, then it is not the fault of the child that the parents got divorced. The father has every right to see his child, every right to um, to be part of the making decision process of education, of marriage, of, of, of health, of, of religion, uh, all these issues the father has to be part of, um, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and he has every right to spend time with his child, and has every right to, uh, to, to make the child feel that this is the father, uh, meaning the father's identity should not be erase, erased in any form or fashion. So these are the two extremes, where you know the, the, the father wants to take all the rights and give nothing to the mother, or... Uh, and that's not acceptable because that's what will happen in the current situation if with custody. In the olden days, custody didn't change the 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 issue of identity. Okay, uh, it didn't change the uh, the issue of access. It didn't change because in a tribal society, everybody knows everybody. So if the uh, and everybody was raising the child, and people uh, the whole tribe was involved, and there was a lot more people you could trust. Um, so, very important, father has his general rights, and this is a very important principle in, in fiqh, which is that the general understanding of things are never overridden, especially in the Hanafi fiqh, by the specific understandings of things. For example, <coughs> the general understanding of things is, for example, to be nice. But if there's a situation, specifically, where, um, someone says, Sharia says to be rude to someone in a specific situation. No, we will still say the general rule overlaps the specific rule unless there's a very, very strong reason 
to do so otherwise. So um, as far as the custody issue is concerned, in the current times that we live in, generally the child should be married or not married. Because in the times that we live in, the situation doesn't really change that much and that significantly between being married and not married in terms of the mother's ability to be a mother. This is why the fuqaha, they have said, you know, if he goes to the grandmother, because it, it mar does marriage change the ability of the mother to be a functional mother? Um, if it doesn't change, then I think the spirit of Islam is, as if you read the Quran, if you read the ahadith, if you read the rights of the mother, uh, then it seems to be that the general spirit is, is that the child needs a strong bond, especially at a young age, with the mother. And this is the mother's right. Um, there is a reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the mother with the emotions that she has. And never uh, can a father act in place of a mother. Unless, uh, you know, uh, the father is part of a tribe, tribal system, where, or uh, if the father is married, and, uh, and, and uh, of course, here I want to say that, you know, if, some, if one of the parties is immoral, and one of the parties is, let's say, not adapting to the Islamic spirit, and when I say to the Islamic spirit, I'm not saying somebody with a holier-than-thou attitude. Uh, I mean in, in the real sense of the word. So, of course, if somebody's not acting to the morals and ethics of Islam, that would go to the credit of the, the other party. But there have been cases, for example, where <clears throat> there was a mother and a father. Father is, uh, you know, <clears throat> let's say Muslim and the mother is not Muslim. And the rights are what the rights are. And in fact, there was a, uh, there's a tradition of the Prophet where the Prophet put the baby in the middle and, and, and told the baby, basically allowed the baby to decide between the Muslim parent and the non-Muslim parent. And the Prophet did dua that the child would choose the Muslim parent, and he did. So, so again, uh, let us not play around with human nature and try to manipulate Islam to be something that's against human nature. Understand the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said you have more of a right as long as you're not remarried. Meaning, you do not have necessarily more or less of a right after you're married. The assumption that because you have a more of a right in one time and then not the other time is wrong is a wrong understanding of the tradition of the Prophet I'll just end here. I hope this is beneficial to a lot of the brothers and sisters out there. If somebody has a question, they know how to contact me the YouTube thing. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.